Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, as they say in Hebrew, Boker Tov. Anyone know what Boker means? Good. No, Boker means morning. Can everyone say that with me? Boker. Bo. Okay, let's do it all together, okay? One, two, three. That means good morning. All right, Tov is good. Boker is morning. Put them together. We have good morning. It literally... If we do the exact translation, it's actually morning good, but we'll keep it at good morning. Boys in the back, Xander, we're good? Okay, Freddie, is that Freddie? Yeah. Right. Okay, I can't, and uh, okay, Xander, Freddie, Ben. No, Ben, Ben. Hi! Hey. Oh, Ben's in the front, going up with the girls, okay, okay. Not a bad move. Um, all right, we're going to get started here. Is everyone on the haiku? Brooke, are we on the haiku? Yeah. Okay, is Brooke here? Yeah. Okay, great. I'm just sending saying names that I remember and then I'm gonna put them to faces. Okay? That's that's the way we're gonna do it. Jared. Okay, yeah, Jared, Jared, I remember. Jared, I remember. Okay. Um as everybody knows, as much as uh as much as we're in a, a good mood and we're gonna learn and it's gonna be fun, um, we would be remiss. Um it would be sad if we did not mention uh anything about what happened on, uh, I think it was Friday night um, in, in Paris where over, over 150 people um, were killed and, and 300 um, were, were injured. Um, I did not find out about it actually until Saturday night because in Israel, uh, you don't, unless like if, you, if you're completely uh, Sabbath and observant like I am, you don't really get the news. And it's not like in the States where you get like the Saturday newspaper to even read, which was actually one of the things I miss probably most about Canada, is the Saturday newspaper. Had the best uh, sports and all that. Um, but I found out Saturday night to, to this bad news. Um, so what I was starting with is sort of just like um, Israel, which, which we don't have to go into, but does experience its, its fair amount of, uh, and that's saying lightly, a fair amount of terrorism. Um, we stand very strong with Paris. Um, and in, has, I, I think I mentioned Rabin Square. Do you guys remember who Yitzchak Rabin was? Anyone remember? I don't, yeah, um, yeah, on the left, your name again? Yeah, yeah, with your hand up in the back. You're going to have to speak up because I can't hear you. I went to Paris, and um, I was there while they had like Paris attacked. Okay. About like the people, like trying to like help, like the like you know, like, I was there and I heard it. Um, and while I was in my hotel, I heard like the bombs and like I walked like past it. Um, remember and like. I remember I was going to like the sixth grade and um, when they were like they knocked on that temple and I uh, saw the people like going like over the fences with the protest. Right, right, right. I do remember. And I was there and I actually saw the people climbing over that fence. Wow. So, oh sorry. Um, so this is, thank you for sharing. Um, this is a, a, an extremely unfortunate event, um, and and this is strictly like to do with Paris, nothing to do with Israel. But Yitzhak Rabin, who I mentioned two weeks ago, who was a uh, prime minister in Israel who was assassinated just over 20 years ago, um, there's a place in Tel Aviv, Tel Aviv, which is one of the main main uh, cities in Israel, called Rabin Square. Rabin Square. You guys are in New Jersey, right? Yes. Is there a place, like a specific place where people like go to protest or have rallies in New Jersey? No. No, no. no like, right. Ma where, where is it in New York? In Manhattan usually, right? Yeah, Times Square. Right, Times Square. So think of, think of Times Square um, like much less lights and much less like huge buildings and everything. But the place where people do, the two places where people do the most amount of rallies and protests in Israel 
One is Rabin Square, which is the square named after um, Yitzchak Rabin. And the other is actually five minutes from my house. Um, I live like a five minute drive from the prime minister's house, the current prime minister, Bibi Netanyahu, and people will protest right outside of his house. So it's just an important thing to know that Israel, and Israel does not have uh, necessarily the best relationship with France, despite um, all, of, um, all of the background noise between Israel and France, um, Israel stands strong with, with Paris in the fight against terrorism. And I thought that was like an important piece to start with, um, knowing, knowing that, that we, know, um, we know where they're coming from, we've experienced it, um, and we can only wish and pray for the families and the health of those who are injured and, and you know, that there should no, no more harm. Um, we're going to continue. Um, does anyone want to have any like last statements about that? Any like any anything they'd like to share? No. Okay. All right. We're going to continue. Um, what I'd like to do right now, if you look at the title, this is called anti-Semitism, Nuremberg Laws, and Jewish Responses. With a raise of your hand, raise your hand if you know what anti-Semitism is. If you know. Okay, um, Jared, can you give a def definition of what anti-Semitism is? Right, can you give an example is good, yeah. You're going to have to speak loud because you're far, okay? Right. So, so good. More, just more specifically and just easier. Anti-Semitism is discrimination against Jewish people. Yeah. Right. Right. Very simple. There's different, different types of discrimination. There's racism. There's uh, Islamophobia. Um, specifically for the Jewish people, there's anti-Semitism. Okay. That's next. Who knows what the, raise your hand if you know what the Nuremberg laws are. Oh, whose hands raised? Is that Rachel? Yeah. What are, what are the Nuremberg laws? So there were laws appearing in before World War II where like the Jews were permitted to be like certain things and they were like they were like Okay, great, awesome. That, you're spot on. So these Nuremberg laws which we're gonna go into today were laws which and, and I spoke about this last time, which do you guys know what systematically means if I say that word? You guys, you guys got to be with me here. Anyone know systematically? Does that word, is that not a word that's, that resonates? Okay, doesn't. So basically, Nuremberg laws, they were laws against the Jewish people. And we'll go into that soon, okay? Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to scroll down and you see that I'm showing you the haiku, is we're going to go to this first page. Uh, we're going to go to this first page over here. Um, those of you who are not um, on this page, we're at number four. Number four on the, on the left side, click on that. And you're going to go to how many Jews do you think there were free Holocaust? And you're going to click on this link. And this link is going to take you here to this question, Jewish life before the Holocaust. How many Jews do you think there were pre-Holocaust? And just vote on one of them. Okay? I'll give you guys a minute to do this. All right? So, again, you're going to go to this. It's the first part on the haiku. And you're going to click on this. Um, link right over here. Oh, did I publish it? I'm pretty sure I published it. Yeah, it's published. No, it's no names. It's just you just put the answer. No, it sh it shouldn't. You guys, it shouldn't need your name. It, it says vote. It says add your name or Facebook or Facebook connect. Very strange. I don't know why it's doing that. Um, let's see. Hold on a second. Because then I'll ask you guys to do it again. Hold on. 
you guys still do you guys still need to uh Any was anyone able to vote? I don't know why you aren't allowed voting. It's so strange. I guess we have to put in our vote with our names. No, 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 put in our names. Yes, right. Let me put a name to it. What am I supposed to do with this? I just wrote the letter to your name. Okay. Um, I don't know why it's it's doing this. I'll spend thirty more seconds on this, and then I'm just going to ask you guys. So weird. It never does this. Okay. So why don't you guys hold on? I don't know. Okay. Fine. I apologize. Why don't you guys just say out loud? Why don't you raise your hand if you think it's. Thirteen point five. Okay, so we have one, two, three people, four people that think it's thirteen point five million Jews. Okay, who thinks it's nine point three? Oh, we have people voting. Yeah, one vote. One vote. Yeah, they're just putting your name in. Um, it's not working. Oh. So far, we have seven. We have seven votes. Sophie, why aren't you voting? Xander, did you vote? Yep, I'm fine. I'll put in my name. Max, did you vote? Yes. Um, Lily, did you vote? Um, Rachel's, did you vote? Um, and now you two. Brooke, there's a Brooke. Hi, Brooke. Brooke, look at the screen. Okay, and then... Two girls on the left. Who are the two girls on my left? Noam and Yeah, Noam and? Gila. Uh, Gila. Eva. 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 Oh, Eva, of course. You weren't sitting this close. Okay, Noam, how are you? You weren't here last class, Noam. <laughs> okay. I know. Okay, so we have around eight votes. 13.5, um, 9.3, and 15.4. And the correct answer is, so the correct answer is actually a little bit of a trick question because it's a matter of the entire world. So the truth is, in there were all together 13.5 million Jews living in Europe pre-Holocaust. Okay? And this is a very significant factor because what we're going to see is, do you guys see this picture that I posted there on the haiku? Does this look familiar to anyone? So this picture, this picture is actually um, a really important, a really important picture. It's if, uh, uh, have, I don't know who's got, no one's been to Israel here. So in Israel, and I've mentioned it before in Israel, there's a very famous, um, there's a very famous um, Holocaust museum called Yad Vashem. And at the end of the at the end of the at the end of the the museum is this picture of all these faces of people who lived before in the Holocaust. Um, now, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to go to the next part, and I'll I'll share my screen with you. So we have thirteen point five million people. Now, what I want you guys to do okay. is is not yet. Um, go to the haiku. And on the haiku itself, you can vote for the next section, is how many Jews are there today? How many Jews are there today? A, B, or C, it's right there, and you can vote. It's uh, right under, literally right under that, that's, that thing that you guys just did, um, under, in the haiku. You guys can follow. If you don't see, I always share my screen with you. Hello? Hi. Are you guys voting?
No. No, this is how many people voted. So, so far, we have 60% who voted 10.2 and 40% who voted 3.4. Did anyone not vote? No. Noam, did you vote? I was just yeah. Yeah. Okay. What about you, Eva? Yeah, I So far, seven. Uh, Freddie, did you vote? Yeah. No, you didn't. Okay, well, oh, it's going up. Okay. Okay. All right, that's fine. Okay. So this is what I this is what I like you to do before we get into the answer. What I like is um, on the haiku. If uh, Max, can you please tell me on that map how many Jews are living in Germany, please? Uh, Germany. Yeah. Five hundred. Awesome, thank you. Um, Will Lily, can you tell me how many are living in France, please? Do you see where France is? Awesome, so 225,000. Um, can someone tell me in Great Britain, um, let's have Rachel, in Great Britain, how many Jews are living there? Great Britain? Um, Rachel, Rachel, who's closest to me right now? Okay. If you add all this up, this is a map of the European Jewish population distribution, 1933. If you add all this up, we have around in, in, in Europe, there's around 9.5 million, and all together, sorry, I know I said something different before, all together in the world, there's around over 14 million Jews living before Europe. The correct answer, this is before, before the Holocaust, sorry, for around 14 million Jews before the Holocaust. Now, and this, this uh, like sort of the last, the last statistic, was there's around also, a bit now it's a little more there's around 16 million but by the time even if we say 16 million so the answer is b right 15.5 million how many people if there were 14 million jews before the holocaust and there's 15 mil, there's 16 million jews after the holocaust how many more jews are living after the holocaust than from before the holocaust who's going to do the math for me If there's 14 million before the Holocaust and 16 million after the Holocaust. Two million. Look at these geniuses. Beautiful. Okay. Two million. Now, let me tell you. Now, some of you may be thinking, okay, so there's more Jews. But let me explain to you something. The math doesn't work out here. The math doesn't work out actually at all here. If there are 14 million Jews prior to the Holocaust, there should be by this point, mathematically speaking, there should be minimally double that amount. I Meaning there should be at least 28 million Jews living in the world today. But unfortunately, due to the Holocaust, there are 2 million. The, the Jewish population went from 14 million to 8 million Jews after the Holocaust. Now, I, I can, I can, you can only imagine what was lost. Now, again, you're going to be hearing a lot of numbers. I just think it's important to sort of frame that and to understand what happened. Well, we're going to start here with the numbers of how many Jews were lost. The question is, how did this happen? Where did, where did this come from? Right? You've heard the term Holocaust. You've heard the term genocide. But where did this come from? And this is a really important, very important discussion to have. Um, what I'd like you to do is with the, just uh, the friend next to you, um, see this picture? Hello? You guys see this picture on the screen? What, I, what I'd like you to do, please, is with the friend next to you, and you could just open up Word or any type of uh, document that you have. And what I'd like you to do, please, is write, or just in point form, just to your friends, it'll take three, four minutes to do this, what do you see? What is this a picture of? Who are the people shown? And the questions are right there. When do you think these were drawn? 
and who are the people in this picture, okay? So those two questions, just with a friend, um, what next to you, you can write it on Word or on anything. Take uh, the next three, four minutes to do it. And I want you to really look at it. What is it symbolized? What are the different like uh, generalizations that are in this picture, okay? Thumbs up if you understand, thumbs down if you don't. I don't see enough thumbs. Does that mean not enough people understand? Okay, one more time. You're going to, with the person next to you, you're going to take this picture which you see. And what I'd like you to do is answer these two questions. When do you think this caricature was drawn? Like, when do you think this picture was drawn? And who is shown in this cartoon? Right? And if you want to add is what is shown? Sort of like what, what symbolism, what representation is here? Okay, great. Um, just with a friend on another, like open up a Word document or a Google Doc, whatever you guys like. You're good. Eva, you understand? Okay. You can open Noam, you understand? Are you, are you enjoying this? Are you enjoying this? Voting's better, I agree. But it's good. Guys, you can just open up Chrome, open up a Google Doc. I don't know my email. I, I, oh, wait, I, you know, I, I don't know. If you don't, just open up Microsoft. I don't know if we have it. Wait, I have a screen now. Yeah, okay, we just need that one. I did not. Don't use your school. I can't do that. Unfortunately, we don't have Microsoft on here. I'm not sure if everybody has a. Do you guys have notepad or anything on there that you can write something? No, we don't have that. What about the kids? Hey, what about the kids? Yeah. No, we have a kids. What? Yeah. There, there must be something that you guys can write, and and it's important to keep it open because we're going to need you to write again once more. Uh, did I do that? Okay, I want to see some writing. You can use some writing. I'm not using no, they're here it's already really good. Two, uh, two more minutes. Two more minutes, everyone. I couldn't get the arrow for you. So, what were you talking about? Real quick, right now. Right. 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 Okay, okay. He never has right. her hair. Oh, great. Right. 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 Guys, you're supposed to be working in pairs where you're looking at this cartoon and you're trying to figure out who is in it, what it represents. You're supposed to jot your answer down. I'm going to give each group a piece of paper and a pencil. Unless you have a Google Doc. If you do, great. I'll make you paper and pencils. Yep. That's not working together. Yeah. Okay, so I don't think there's any word. Do we have a paper? Yeah, we do. I'll jump in the future. I'm going to get a job. I like to go, but I don't like to go. Okay. All right, one, one more minute, everyone.
Okay, do you guys need more time? Yes. Yeah, I just gave the paper. Okay, you guys, you guys, I'm going to give you guys another minute. Sophie, are you good? Are you okay? Ben, are you good? Yeah. Xander, are you doing the work? Yep. Awesome. Max, are you good? Uh, not yet. Noam? Um, Jared, are you okay? Yeah, I'm trying to think of a word. Are you? Okay. What you guys are doing right now, just by by think, just on a side note, is you're sort of like um, being critical and looking at media, right? And trying to see what media sees, which is a very important thing. Okay, another minute, please. we doing okay um all right that's uh 35 seconds and then i'm gonna ask for an, from a number of people to uh please respond um and what i'm gonna do but because we're gonna need for the next section i'm gonna give you guys um a google doc to open so that we're good Okay, um, all right, let's have some responses. I'd like to first hear from uh, Freddie. Freddie, okay, can you please, uh, okay, so again, we're, we're looking at the answer to the question of um, what does this picture show? When do you think it was drawn? And other ideas. Okay, Freddie, you want to start? Okay, Jared, please, loudly. Awesome. Okay, um, let's have from Rachel. I saw your hand was up. Um, okay, why do you think it's Jewish? Because that has the stars on it. Like around the stage, they're like stars. And stars. Okay, thank you. Um, let's have from Eva and Noam. Okay, so we said that the Jews spread all around the world because the snake is the Jews. Yeah. It's like there's like stars all over it that represent um, the Jews. Yeah. Great. And um, anyone else? Okay, so I, what I want to show you, I'm going to make this a little bigger. You guys can see it big on my screen. Okay, so you guys are right. Um, what are a couple of the things that you know that it's Jewish? 
Jewish stars on space. Right. Is there anything else that you could see that makes it Jewish? Yes, Xander. Okay, awesome. Keep a, a, a yarmulke or a, a head covering. Um, anything else? All right, so I'll tell you because you guys are very innocent and very um, beautiful people, but um, there is a stereotype um, amongst Jews that Jews have big noses. Um, as you can see right here, and this is a Jew with a big nose. Um, why do you think a snake? Pardon? Sinister, great. Um, does anyone maybe, I know this is, not, this is not a religious studies class, but does a snake bring anything back? Like, does, it, does a snake remind you of anything in the Bible, a famous story? Yes. yes. Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, right? Right? He made them, he made them sin. So all of these things. Um, now, now, when do you guys think this was made? Okay, awesome. So most people are saying what most answers, what everyone says, that around the Holocaust. And the truth is, it's not the case. It's not true. This was not made in, near the Holocaust. This was done in the 1800s. A famous, a famous uh, book that came out called The Learned of Elders of Zion. There is a conspiracy theory, a real conspiracy theory, that the Jews were actually trying to take over the world. There is a book. Um, I think it was, if I'm not wrong, Beth, if maybe you want to help me out, it was written maybe in France um, and it accepted amongst a lot of the European countries that the Jews were actually trying to take over the world. And this book still exists today and in some countries and in some places is taught and is accepted. But the important point, and this is what I want you guys to listen, because I just asked before, we were talking about the death tolls. And the question is, how did this happen? And everyone's thinking, okay, it's the Holocaust. And it didn't happen out of nowhere. One of the main parts about the Holocaust or how something like this could happen was because anti-Semitism, something which I explained before, which is discrimination towards Jewish people, was something that was very much a part of European culture. Right, you know, American culture, you guys talk about freedom, sports, you know, working hard, getting better, all that. And that's part of your culture, you know, the melting pot, all these things which you guys probably know much better than I do. In Europe, they also have their own culture. One of the things that was part of the culture in many different countries, one of them being Germany, was anti Semitism, was the discrimination towards Jewish people. And if you look as far back, far to the 10th century, 9th, early, early on, there was always anti-Semitism towards Jewish people. It was never just like one day a guy named Hitler came up and it's like, we're going to you know, kill Jewish people. It was, came, the only reason why that was able to happen was because it was an environment in which it allowed it to happen. And I want you guys to understand that because it's a very, very important point. Because even before, um, my understanding is you guys probably have heard the term Nazi, you've heard the term Hitler, you've heard the term anti-Semitism, Holocaust, um, uh, ghettos, you've heard of these things, you may not know what they are in detail, and I'll explain that a bit more, but you have to know that it didn't come out of nowhere. And there were things that happened in which people didn't stop, and that's something which we're going to look at. Does anyone have any questions about that point that I just made? Okay, um, that's, uh, so what I'd like to do right now, um, and if you just follow on my screen, please, we're going to go to the top right. And I'm going to give you guys around a, a long time, I'm going to give you guys around 10 minutes to, to do this. Okay, what you have here is a, uh, is a lino board. We've done lino boards before. Um, we don't have, you don't have to read the explanations here. You could just click where it says Paramus, and that will bring you here. And what you have here are a number of, um, in the middle in purple is an explanation, but what you have here are a number of different um, characteristics and explanations about who the Nazis were, what Nuremberg laws were. There's a video somewhere here, um, and I want to discuss this, but this is like a really good way that you guys could work. Um, get the information yourself. What I'd like you to do, and this is the one thing, 
if you guys could just listen here there is four sections I want you to read all the sections I want you to watch the video that's why it's gonna take time I want you to write one question on two of the four sections okay so that means two questions all together I want you to ask just a general question about something like if you read something you don't understand or well, how this happened I want you to write that question and ever does everyone remember how to use lino boards right you remember if you could just follow like look on the board all you do is you're gonna take one of these you're gonna drag it remember you don't put it on top of anything you don't write on top of anyone um, you you don't do any you don't do any of that you write your aunt what I want you to do is to write read everything and then I want you to write, write two questions about something you don't know and then what I'd also like you to try to do is look at other people's questions and try to answer their question so what you would do is let's say if I wrote a question and I'll just do this what are the Nazis okay and I would write my name Zach post and then let's say if someone knew how to answer I would post under and write they were blah 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 and then I write my name uh, Eva okay and it would go look like this so then we're this whole lino board is gonna be filled with questions and answers and we're gonna go through some of that I'm gonna give you guys 10 minutes to do this work now okay because I want you to really read and I want you to watch the video and I want you to write your questions and I want you to answer thumbs up if you understand thumbs down if you don't okay if you remember to first please nobody should write everyone should be reading the information first Brooke are you okay okay great It's not working. What is working on your What did I do? So Jared Jared wrote a question, thank you. Everybody should be but I'd like everyone to read everything, please. It's very important that everybody reads and and watches and looks at all the pictures. You guys have a lot of time to work on this, okay? Is anyone having issues posting? It's not helping? Okay, we can, when he clicks on the video, he can see it. It doesn't work? It's not working, hold on. Yeah, we can't, we can't able to Okay, so this is what I'll do. If the video is not working, hold on. Okay, if um, what I'm gonna do so you guys will all see, um, I'm gonna post, I'm gonna put it on the haiku page. Actually, no, you know what? I'll show you. Yeah, I'm gonna put it on the haiku page. Just refresh your haiku page. I'm putting it right under where it says um, Paramus. That way you guys have the link there, okay? I'll show you where I put the, the link for the video. I'm putting the link on the uh, on the actual haiku in the same section. You guys are gonna have to. You just have to refresh your page. I'll show you where I put it so you guys can see. Sorry, it's not working. Sometimes these things happen. Do you guys see on the right side? Hello, over here. You guys see? I got it. You got it. Great. So the it's on this page, but you have to refresh your page. Uh, Rachel and Brooke, great question. Freddie, thank you for the answer. But remember, I want to make sure everyone's properly uh, reading everything. Right. Thank you, Beth. I appreciate it. Oh, wait. I know what I'm going to say. I can't click 
on it now. Dad, where did you put the uh, video? So they the video, uh, I'll, sh I'll share my screen. It's on the Haiku page on the top right, but you have to, under where it says Paramus, where they clicked for the, uh, for the uh, Lino, but they have to refresh their page because I just put it on there. Beth, you uh, you fa you see it? Show, show me with your uh, with your arrow. See, it's right here. See, I'm at what is Nazism and Paramus right under Paramus. Okay. If you don't have it there, then refresh the page because I just put it on. Great. Got it. Great. Okay, guys, you're working really well. I'm really liking some of the stickies I see. And I appreciate you all, all reading very well. Look at the pictures, look at the video, look at what I wrote, look at, look at everything. Look, yeah, the, thank you, Beth. The questions you guys are coming up with. I don't know why. It's it's so, Sophie, did you finish reading everything? It's not loading. What's not loading? You guys are doing really well, really well. Thank you. Who, who is saying they don't know what to do? What time is that? The time is 12 o'clock. 
do one more minute one more minute okay Okay. Um, all right. We're going to stop here. If everyone can please, if everyone can please turn off the video that they were watching. Um, Rachel, sorry. Um, if everyone can please sort of uh, just just face. So I want. I I think a lot of you did great. Um, put posted great stickies. I want to just make sure that everyone knows that like the work that we give here um, is really is really for your information. Like the stuff that we're teaching here is really important. Like very important stuff. So so please try to take it take it seriously. Um, I want, I want, we're not going to get into the questions, but I like, uh, I'm going to ask from four people to bring up one important point about the Nazis. First of all, I'll ask a question. What does Nazi stand for? Okay. Anyone want to try to guess? Maybe you could look at the haiku. Yes, uh, Ben? The National Socialist Party, great. Um, very important, I'm not gonna get into the politics of it, but the Nash, they were, just like you guys have Democrats and Republicans, the National Socialist Party was a party that was elected, and they were the Nazis, right? Um, just like you call a Democrat, a Democratic, Democrat, and a Repub people who vote Republican, public Republicans, it's the same thing. The National Socialist Party, just like Barack Obama is the head of the Democrat Party, Hitler, Adolf Hitler, was the head of the National Socialist Party. Okay? Um, let's go get, okay, so four important points about the Nazi Party. Um, let's have one from Max. Well, the Nazi Party was the Nazis wanted to take over Europe, Europe and claim it for themselves. I can't hit one more time. Louder. The Nazi party was the Germans wanting to take over Europe and claim it for themselves. Okay, so that's a little bit farther down the road. But yes, they were a party that seek to get a lot of power. Um, let's have from Lily another point about the Nazis. Loudly. They wanted to? They wanted to eliminate Jews. Great. Does anyone know why they want to eliminate Jews? Yes, Sophie. Uh, because they weren't awesome. Great. Well, not awesome that they want to eliminate them, but awesome your answer. Right? Um, 
Very, very important. Now, everyone, please listen up because I started this class with the question of how is it possible that so many Jews were killed? How did this happen? So the first answer that I gave was that this was able to happen because there was anti-Semitic part of the culture. But then the second part is that there was a party that rose to power that wanted to eliminate the Jews. Now, the question, which we're not going to go so into, is did they want to eliminate them? Did they want to just send them away? Did they want them just not to live in Germany? What the important point here, and what Sophie brought up, which was great, is that the Germans, has anyone, can you raise your hand if you know, heard the term Aryan before? Um, okay, uh, Brooke, can you explain what Aryan is? Or like a, an idea? Well, so I have a question. Yes, Sophie. Uh, don't they have to, like look a certain way? Right. Okay. Awesome. Um, I'll, I'll get to that. Ben, you wanted to say something. Wait, so, so, wait, Sophie is actually a physical example of what an Aryan would have been. Right. So just just to answer, just to, yes, yes, in the back. What's your name again? Sorry. Uh, okay, so guys, we don't have a lot of time and there's still a, a little to do. So I'd like to do in the back with the glasses. Can you just remind me your name, please? That's Rachel. You need me or you want to answer oh. your question? Ra Rachel, are you, are you saying something or do you have a question for Beth? She has a question for me. Okay. Ben? Ben? You, you wanted to say something. Something about the something about the Nazis. Aryan is someone with blonde hair and blue eyes. Okay, fine. So let me explain. Now, is everyone paying attention here? Because this is important stuff. What I'm sharing with you. If you guys don't know this, this is this is the bread and butter of Holocaust education. The air, the Nazis believed that, and this is very very important. The Nazis believed that there were different races. Right? Just like if we could go, you know, if we go back to, to you know, the United States of America, not even so long ago, um, and even till today, there's racism that still exists. The Nazis believe in something called, and I'm not going to go so into it, but basically a, a race ideology. And they saw that there were different races. They said, and the Aryan race, that was the best race. They were the most pure most, um, most amazing race. Okay. And then they actually have a chart, which I don't have here, but you guys could Google it. There are charts of which races rank where, like, you know, like, you know, before, you know, not to make this comparison, but like before, like a sports season, they rank teams like, you know, uh, Cleveland Cavaliers are going to be the best and golden state warriors. And then the bottom are, we're going to probably be the New Jersey nets, like things like that. What they do for what they did with the Hol with the people is they ranked them, and the Aryans were the best, and it went down and went kept on going down, till you got to um, even you got to people who had mental and physical disabilities, people who were who were who were who were um, um, homosexuals, um, and and then on the bottom of that list were Jews. Right, a very important point that has to be made right at the outset that Jewish people were not the only ones that suffered during the Holocaust. There were many others. Um, black people suffered during the Holocaust. Homosexuals, um, people who had disabilities. People were people were all impacted, um, and this is important to know. The Jewish people, though, they were on the bottom of that list. They were the worst, and so when Sophie says that they tried to eliminate them. They were trying to eliminate them. And again, um, it may not have been that from the beginning they wanted to kill them. It could have just been that they wanted all the Jews out. It's a, very, it's a big discussion amongst scholars of, of the Holocaust about whether or not like, they wanted to kill them from the beginning. But it's a big discussion about, but it, what's important is that the reason why they wanted to eliminate them was because if a Jewish person were to marry a, an Aryan right? An Aryan, then they're poisoning them. That's what they saw. They saw, and if I showed you, and I'll show you in another class, 
a lot of the, you guys saw one like a cartoon. M many of the cartoons that existed during the times of the Nazis were of like rodents and, and insects because that represented the Jewish people that they were like dirty, low, and they needed to be like, just like when you have like ants or bugs in your house, you get an exterminator. That's what, you sh that's what they tried to do with the Jewish people. And so that is sort of like the context, right? It's not like they just came and said, and this is very important. It's not like they just came and said, oh, the Jewish people, we don't believe in their religion. We don't believe in their God. Uh, you know, they're horrible. No, they, they took science and they took science. The Nazis took science and they said, no, these are the worst people. We have to get rid of them. And that's how they convinced people. And you guys probably read some other things there. That's why it was very easy to convince people. They made laws. They made laws, the Nuremberg laws, which you guys read about. You know, the Jews had to wear a Jewish star to make sure. Why do they have to wear a Jewish star? So you know not to marry them. You know if they're walking down the street that you shouldn't be too close to them, right? They couldn't have the same jobs um, as a doctor, or as a lawyer. Um, they couldn't go to the same schools. They couldn't drink from the same fountains. They couldn't do that things because you didn't want to come too close to them. Um, someone wrote a question about ghettos. Ghettos was, was a place that after when the Nazis came to power, they took all the Jews and they put them in a little area to live, right? And um, I'll show you this. This is very, I'll even, it'll even go so much. You guys, if you go back to the lino and I'll show you it, because this is, I find, one of the most powerful um, pictures. You guys see my lino board? Do you guys see this picture over here? Hello? Do you guys see this picture? Yeah, is everybody there? I don't see picture. This picture on the lino board on the bottom in the white, this is, an, this is literally an explanation of, define, of, of Nazis defining who is Jewish, right? We all pretty much have the idea that someone who is Jewish has a Jewish mom, a Jewish dad, someone converted, someone had to be Jewish in there for you to be Jewish, okay? Here, you may have been Christian. You may have thought you were Christian, but if you had like a Jew, one Jewish grandparent, but you didn't think you were Jewish, you were still considered Jewish. They had laws about this because it wasn't about religion. It wasn't about, it may have been, but we don't, it's not, that's not what's obvious. It was about the science behind it. And that's how this happened. They thought that the Jewish people were terrible and they needed to get rid of. So when we think about the first question of 6 million Jews being murdered, starting with 14 and ending with 8, right? it makes sense here, according to them. Um, we're not going to have time to, to get through a lot of the stuff that we did today. Um, one question which I want you to think of, you guys could do this poll on the bottom of the page quickly, um, is, is what do you think Jew, how do you think Jews reacted? Do you, if they lived, if, again, so the Nazis, just one, one part of history which is important, the Nazis came to power in 1933, okay? Democratically, they didn't have a rebellion, they didn't fight, they didn't kill anyone, they were voted in. And when they were voted in, they started doing all these laws. They started taking, making Jews wear yellow stars, taking them away from their jobs, pushing them to live in ghettos. And the question is, what, would you, what, what do you think the Jews did then? And what I'd like to finish off, and I'm going to share my screen with you. You guys could do the voting. But while you're voting, um, please, uh, please look here. Um, on where it says reflection and diary entry, this is important. I'd like everyone to do it. We're going to start next class. Um, with going over your answers. Um, what I'd like you to do is if you were a Jew, so I'll read it out. Imagine you are a Jew in Germany in the 1930s. Write a diary entry explaining what you would do if you'd be living in Germany at the time the Nazis rose to power. What would you do? Would you leave Germany, stay there, pretend to be Aryan? And what I want you to do is write them on the page comments below. Okay, that's very important. I'd like you to all do this. Because what this is showing you is sort of like these Nazis, what they did, why they did it, and what did the Jews do? That's very important. What did the Jews do when they were living there? Right? You may think, oh, why did the Jews stay? But if you were a successful 
businessman or business lady and you had your money and you had your job and you had your family, it's not so easy just to pick up and leave. Okay, so I'm going to end on that note. Thank you all very much for your participation today. And I'll see you guys, I think, in two weeks, correct? Yep. All right, bye, everyone. Thank you. Please make sure you, please, please make sure you do the, uh, the final uh, work. Thank you. Bye. 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 B